Okay, this is a ta final tally of the supplies you will need for this um, worm farm flow through container system. You're going to need the, a drill with two different bits. These are the ones that I used, but you know, you could use whatever. The smaller one is the 11th, 11th by 64, I believe. I have my glasses on and you know what? I still can't read it. And the next biggest one is the 16th, 16 by 64. And um, the bigger bit is the one I used for the drainage holes. And the smaller one is is uh, for the holes that I made for the tie backs to tie down um, the, um, the mesh tray, I will call it. And then I use the spade bits. I've got a, a five eighths here. Oops, I've got the five eighths. And this is a three eighths. And the five eighths was to make the holes on the lid. And the smaller one uh, was to make these these holes here on the side, and um, and then I've got the chisel was just to chis uh, the chisel out the excess plastic after making um, the holes. There. Um, and then uh, you got your exacto knife to to cut the square bottom, and the tie backs and scissors to cut the tie backs. And then I've got my three containers. You only need one lid. This is my best find of the day. I found this at Dollarama. This is a non-stick vegetable grill, and it is the perfect size for the screening that you're gonna need at the bottom of two of the containers. So you need two of these. These were a buck fifty each. Um, best deal of the day because I was gonna use a cooling rack for baking. And it was four dollars, and it was the right size, but also too it was heavier. So uh, if you want to go with the cooling rack, you go right ahead. But you um, just keep in mind that it is heavier, and it's going to weigh the bottom down more than than this. And the tie backs that I have are going to be used just to tie this down to the bottom so it doesn't move. Anyway, I'm going to get started. Um, I'm not going to show you. Um, a video clip of exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and do what I need to do and then I'm going to show you the final product in the next clip. Here is one of the finished boxes. I did holes on the side. I used my spade bit, the smallest one that I had, and also five, five eight of an inch holes with my spade bit on the sides. Now there's a reason why I did four, and um, I'll explain that to you in a minute. Here, I did two, cut out two sections, and uh, the X-Acto knife works great for this. All you have to do is is puncture through it, or just do a pilot hole, and then cut through it. It's um, follow the lines inside the box. There's a molded square there. Um, that's perfect. You don't have to measure anything. Now, here's the second box, an exact duplicate. Now, this is why I did the four holes on the side because of you need air. And the only time that you're going to be using both of these boxes together on top of one another is that when the worms are on the bottom, there and they eat all their food, right? You're going to want to collect those castings without the worms, hence the flow through um, technique. But so you're going to put the food, the new food, and the bedding in the empty container, place it on top of the container where the worms are, and um, the worms are going to find the new food because they won't have any more food. And once the worms gravitate to the top box with their new food and settle in, then you could remove this bottom container full of the castings and put it in your garden. I punctured a hole through both boxes 
simultaneously. I did one on each side and at the other end and then I flipped the boxes and I did another one so that when these two boxes are together there's cross ventilation. The bottom box is for any water that and any liquid that comes through is going to come through the bottom box and that you could also that water you could use in your garden as well. Um, from all the YouTube videos that I've watched, um, there's not a lot of liquid unless you overwater um, the bedding. And I guess if you're going to pulverize your the food, you'll probably get more more liquid there too. So any excess fluid is going to go is going to seep down there. And what I'm going to do too, I haven't done it yet, is I think I might drill um, a corner hole in each of the two top boxes as well for for more for more drainage my next step is to put the wire grill and fasten it to the bottom of the box okay here's the screen that's fastened to the bottom of the box what I did was I punctured or I drilled two holes for each tie that I needed so that it would uh, be fastened properly here. Here's a close up. There we go. And one in the middle. And one on all four corners. And there you go. You're going to do the exact same thing to the duplicate box. And then we are finished. So here we are. I've got both containers my duplicates made here's container number three put this on top and then I don't know if you could see the depth put the lid on and there we have my handy dandy worm farm. Let me rotate it. There we go. Holes on the top. And that's it for now. My next video will be all about how to set up the worm farm with live worms. Stay tuned. And thank you so much for watching.